Hey, hello everybody. This is a video series that I'm beginning to present to lawyers. And if at any time that this video stops broadcasting, live streaming, I can, uh, there's nothing I can do to stop that. Now, my phone is hacked as a result of being an organized stalking, gang stalking, target individual. And you can research this crime extensively online in order to be able to understand what it is and how it operates. As a result, the surveillance and cell phone hacking is a method of this crime uh, perpetrated by the perpetrators. So, we're going to say that this Periscope video will not broadcast, okay, in reference to you being able to watch me make my statements. This video will also be put on YouTube as well. say it if it's because of experience, but I will say because of educated knowledge for Kenny. To what they do not want the public to know, or that they do not want the target to do, they will, through the cell phone hacking, they can manipulate uh, applications, they can uh, go inside your phone and, and manipulate anything that you're doing within it, like access your email accounts, shut the phone down, stop videos from broadcasting, and compromise and compromise pretty much anything within any application by going into them and erasing things. Hold on. Now this is all over the internet. That's cell phone hacking, cell phone tracking, computer hacking, okay, email account hacking, YouTube account hacking, blog hacking. It's all over the internet being exposed by thousands of individuals all over America right now in real time people who have never spoken to each other or shared their experiences. Okay, so when we have thousands and thousands and thousands of Americans uh, detailing the same exact story, a pattern of behavior obviously develops. So let's see if this video or any part of this video series that I'm going to be making to lawyers gets compromised in any way, at least to the point to where it's not viewable on Periscope and or the, uh, and or the video is not saved into my gallery application so I can put it on YouTube. And let's see if they want to upload to YouTube as well. Now, fellow American citizens, as a result of being a target of this crime, it's extremely hard for targets of this crime to connect with lawyers and or law firms and or human rights groups. And the reason why that is is because in part of the way that law firms and lawyers operate, it's very hard to find a lawyer who is in their office at the time the target goes there, okay? Because they can be at court, they can be uh, at the law library, they can be wherever. As a result, the target is, is told to uh, leave their phone number okay, with the receptionist. Now, you can go to Google and research how uh, phone call rerouting and, folk and, and uh, phone uh, uh, interceptions, like if someone goes to call the target's phone, if their phone is hacked, they can see in incoming calls and reroute them or intercept them. This, this is literally all over the internet, literally, being exposed by thousands of individuals. Now, periodically throughout this video, I'm going to have to uh, check to make sure that I'm still live stream broadcasting. Now, I have made videos like this, and then, and then when I get done making the videos, I go to bring the video up to watch it, and I can't watch it. It's literally still framed. I'm also going to interject another thing. If any negative types of comments that you see... On any of my videos, including as I'm broadcasting them, just ignore them, because I am being cyber bullied online. I am being trolled, uh, which is a method of gang stalking. So just ignore them, okay? Now, the reason why I decided to make this video is because I, as a result of the isolation techniques of gang stalking, uh, when I when I, I'm going to interject a statement here real fast, so you can visually get an idea of how this crime operates. It's not stalking by gang. Let me put my glasses back on. You know how like a domestic violence, uh, 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 individual who's involved in domestic violence, when they attempt to isolate their victims in their homes, they'll take away the credit cards, the money, they'll take away all communications, they'll sabotage friendships, in including family uh, relationships. And this is done so the target, so the victim can be isolated in the abuse. So when we look at how 
when we research online at Google and YouTube isolation techniques of gang stalking, we can clearly see that the techniques that are employed in gang stalking, isolation techniques, uh, are very similar to domestic violence uh, techniques that are used against uh, domestic violence victims. Cell phone call rerouting, email interception, faking email replies, social infiltration, including family infiltration, uh, intercepting uh, our mail, whether it be emails and or physical mail delivery services, Google gang stalking and postal workers, gang stalking mail theft and mail delayment. And this is, not just, this, this is not just dedicated to USPS, but also any other type of mail delivery services that can be Googled. Now, all my statements can be Googled and, and when appropriate, YouTube. So, and then you can also research slander and gang stalking. A good video to watch uh, pertaining to how easy it is to prohibit a targeted individual of this crime from developing social relationships uh, is through slander. So you can, all, uh, remember, all my descriptions can be Googled. You can YouTube the YouTube video, listen to a stranger. And the reason why targets, uh, hundreds and hundreds of targets have incorporated this YouTube video in their blogs, petitions, okay, and other documentation uh, platforms as a, as a way to try to illustrate to uh, the community, okay, that they're, tr they're attempting to reach out to, to expose this crime, they incorporate that YouTube video in their blogs and petitions in order to brief the public on an aspect of how this crime operates, okay, which assists them, the perpetrators, in isolating the target by and through, but not limited to, engaging in slander. If an individual tries to develop any type of relationship with anyone, these individuals who are tracking the target in real time, at all times, will see that, that the target is interacting with the person. They'll wait until that target leaves that person's physical presence and then approach them with a badge, a lie, and even a fake bogus criminal investigation file and intimidate that person uh, either with, either through uh, the fake bogus criminal investigation file, the slander campaign, and the prestige of the badge in order to mentally influence, psychologically influence that individual to never have any uh, further conversations with that person. And as a result, this assists in the continued isolation of the target. So that can be researched as well. Like for instance, when you go to YouTube and type in listen to a stranger, cross-reference what you see in that video to, uh, to the information at Google that you'll find by typing in fake bogus criminal investigation files and gang stalking, slander and gang stalking, and incorporate those three within your understanding pertaining to how a target can how that assists them in ice, keeping the target isolated. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna uh, also put this video on YouTube in case it doesn't live stream broadcast through Periscope once I get done making this video. Uh, now, what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna give you a synopsis, just a very preliminary introduction in reference to some of the things that I've been through. Excuse me, please as a result of being a victim of this crime. This is going to be a video series for lawyers so they can take each video, listen to what I have to state, follow the instructions and directions that I give them, so I can at least take these video URL links, put them on a piece of, copy and paste them on a piece of paper and fax them to the law office. Because if they're prohibiting a target from inter, interacting with a lawyer for, in, in, through any means, communications interception, the lawyer not being in the office, okay, at least then the target can attempt to hand deliver some evidence through, through hand delivery, through faxes, okay, through a certified mail return receipt because they got a sign for that, okay, and if they do not uh, receive what a target put in the mail, then that at least that can, can, sh that can show collusion with the uh, postal services. So we have to try and work around how they operate, okay? So, my name is Leslie Williams. I'm in San Diego, California. I live in La Jolla. Today's date is July 9th, 2017. It's Sunday. So, I was made homeless in Michigan as a result of being a victim of this crime. Creating the homelessness of targeted individuals is all over the internet to be a direct methodology of gang stalking. Perpetrated covertly by and through, but not limited to. Covertly uh, uh, working in a, a 
cooperating partnership, uh, partnering relationship with landlords, property owners, uh, in order to uh, stage events at apartment complexes to then blame the event on the victim and then use that as a normal apparent excuse to, to evict the target. There's a whole host of techniques that these uh, criminals will use to cause the eviction of a target. Okay, in my case, they literally stole my rent out of the mail, mail that was mailed, certified mail, return receipt, okay, mailed through the United States Postal Service. Now, the money order that I, use, that I bought to uh, use as the monetary uh, uh, mechanism to pay the rent was also a United States Postal Service money order. Okay, so that was done in Dearborn, Michigan, through the Dearborn City Hall Postal, uh, Postal Service in October of 2010. Now, come on. So, uh, they seen that I was uh, bottlenecking all their other available techniques that they could employ towards me as I was staying at the Dearborn Apartments on Monroe Street in Dearborn, Michigan, by and through not getting sucked into any type of altercations uh, that they were attempting to prop up, okay, and not responding to it, okay. They were breaking into that apartment, moving things around, uh, they literally even went... They literally even went into that apartment and refolded my underwear, okay, in specific ways, ways that I would never even dream of folding it. That is done to let you know that they, that your that your 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 personal space has been violated in order to put you in a victimized mindset. So you can research how they'll break into your apartment and move furniture around and leave and intentionally leave steal things, replace them later. I reported it to the Dearborn police and discovered that they omitted facts and put in false information in the police report so I could see through um, continued continued peri periodical uh, uh, violations of my rights pertaining to police reports through the Dearborn police that the police were not only not doing their jobs but assisting in uh, uh, protocols that gang stalking expeditions engage in. Hold on. So what I started doing was developing ways to prove that this thing that these expeditions were intentionally uh, using techniques that were hard to prove, okay, uh, that were hard to prove but being covertly uh, uh, managed and covertly executed by and through, but not limited to, making predictions about what they would do, and then when they would do it, I would uh, make sure that the things that they would end up doing would leave a paper trail. And that's why I mailed my mail, my rent certified mail return receipt, because it left a paper trail. That landlord kept trying to bait me to pay my rent through cash or through other means, okay? Uh, by saying, well, why do you want to spend five ninety five on a post, uh, post office money order when all you got to do is hand me the rent? Or why don't you pay it through another means where money orders only cost a dollar? Because in through the in real time tracking of me in Dearborn, Michigan, Michigan, they could see how I was paying my rent. Plus, through the property owner, they could see that all the other prior uh, rents were monthly rents were paid through postal money orders. So he kept trying to bait me to not pay my rent using the post office. Now, why did they do that? Because they knew that the post office was already involved in gang stalking. Okay, you got to remember, I was being gang stalked at that apartment complex. So it was my intention to bottleneck all their other available techniques. And then use one, okay, that would leave a paper trail because I knew they were they were going to make me homeless again from that apartment because they did in prior apartments at other locations. Now the mail services were already being used uh, on me for gang stalking techniques in prior apartments, so they had already become a, a they had already become a, they had already became an identified associated mechanism that they were using. So what I did again, I bottlenecked all their other techniques, available techniques, and brought it down to where they could only create the homelessness by using one technique, one that would leave a paper trail. So what I did was I went and I made about 11 notaries and described a bunch of different things, things that they would do and, and how they would create the homelessness and had them notarized through at least one uh, city hall in Dearborn Heights, okay? And uh, they basically created the homelessness in the way that I predicted in the notary. Now, here's some other things that were going on right before they created the homelessness. Buying and through stealing my mail through the Dearborn City Hall postal work, uh, post office. They were um, 
what I was doing in reference to how I was responding to the ongoing campaign at this apartment complex was I was reaching out to news stations, I was reaching out to the uh, FBI, I was reaching out through the ACLU and Amnesty International through emails, well, th through at libraries, U of M Dearborn Michigan Library, Henry Ford Community College Library computers, and Henry Ford Centennial Library and the Bloomfield Hills Public Library. Okay, now you can go to Google and type in cyber surveillance and gang stalking and libraries and gang stalking. Look at what comes up. You gotta remember, this is a crime that operates on, but not limited to, a template of protocols, methods, tactics, techniques, and maneuvers. They take the information based on the surveillance and they say this is either a threat of, for a threat assessment or a benefit analysis. Meaning that whatever the target's doing, is it a benefit to them? Or is it a threat to them? If they can see anything that the target's doing is a threat to them, because they know they're breaking the law, then what they'll do then is create the homelessness in order to be able to use the homelessness as a control mechanism because they know everybody's got to sleep. That's something that every human being on this planet has to do, right? So they seen that I was reaching out to places, okay, that could see that my rights were being violated, okay? As a result, they said, well, this is getting too out of control, so we're going to have to do something to her so the circumstance from it can be that can benefit us. The homelessness. So they stole, They finally stole the rent. But they were delaying it every month for five months in a row and then trying to say that they didn't get it before October 2010. So they started in around April, May 2010, waiting until I paid the rent and then sending me an eviction notice and trying to say that they didn't get the rent and that I got 30 days to pay it again. And then keeping me mentally tangled up in that concern. Okay for 28 days and then finally stating that they got it and that it got lost in billing. This was done in order to keep you in a constant neural mental loop. Are they going to steal it? Are they going to are they going to claim they never got it while I'm being threatened creatively along my route that your rent was going to be stolen? Because that's another aspect of gang stalking. Okay. Just to threaten that they're going to do something to keep you in a neural mental loop about it and then finally do it so that you know that when it's done that it was because of this crime. They want you to know you're being victimized. Now, you can go to my blog that's attached to my Twitter account, which is at H-I-G-G-I-N-S-G-G-G-G. -G -G. I'll state that again, please. My Twitter account is at H-I-G-G-I-N-S-G-G-G-G. That's one word. Exposing Truth is the name of the account. My current blog that I am, that I am uh, constructing is attached to the profile of that account. Now, sections of that blog are under construction, okay? So, uh, if anything that you see doesn't appear to have any sequential flow, uh, so you can come to a comprehensive understanding pertaining to what's being presented within that section, just continue, okay? Continue, because there are huge sections of that blog that do have things presented, so you'll have a sequential, uh, 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 that are presented sequentially, so you'll have a resulting comprehensive understanding pertaining to what's being presented. What's in that blog is indisputable. It literally shows me uh, uh, videos of me walking into U of M, Dearborn, Michigan campus, okay, and, and reporting that I'm being gang stalked again. It literally shows me stating I'm here reporting being gang stalked again in your library. Now, U of M, Dearborn, Michigan is 3,000 miles away from San Diego. I also wrote some Google group Google group forum posts, many forum posts, and those were infiltrated by the perpetrators at HFCC uh, Library and U of M Dearborn, Michigan Library, okay, and things were put in it that I did not put in there, okay, so some of these Google group forum posts, though, show me clearly stating that I'm being identically harassed at apartments, wooded areas, U of M Dearborn, Michigan, and businesses, it clearly shows me stating that, and that the harassment is identical. Now, what you're going to witness in that blog concerning the harassment everywhere I go in San Diego, okay, businesses, libraries, universities, and wooded areas. That's no accident. Now, I can prove I was in Michigan in 2010, 2011, when these Google group forum posts were made. It literally shows me stating that I am being identically harassed at apartments, 
wooded areas, U of M, businesses, and, and transportation routes. I come out here to San Diego and I have caught on thousands of audio files identical to a T, verbal harassment occurring in wooded areas, universities, libraries, and businesses. And the blog indisputably proves it. This in turn, just this aspect of what's exposed in this blog, flat out indisputably proves that I was telling the truth about what I was enduring in Michigan. Okay, it shows that I was gang stalked two apartments and then two wooded areas after they made me homeless and along all my routes and everything I endured at U of M. Okay, which literally shows that I have been telling the truth all along because what I have exposed and caught in San Diego is identical to a T pertaining to what I was explaining and detailing that I was experiencing in Michigan. This is video one of a video series. Now I want you to listen closely to what I'm stating. My blog flat out shows that I've been on national radio shows on multiple dates. Those radio show links are incorporated within the blog, including the 91713 Ground Zero show that I was on and the 90115 Ground Zero show that I was on, which flat out state shows me state that my blogs and YouTube videos have been hacked from the from the onset of their initial creation, okay, and continually hacked. Absolutely, you wouldn't believe the slanderous bullshit of, uh, the, concerning the blog infiltration and my email account infiltration in Michigan. U of M played a massive, massive role in the gang stalking of me from day one, from the very first time I entered their campus all the way up until the last time. I was gang stalked all over HFCC campus, including as I was taking classes, okay? My name is Leslie Williams, I'm in San Diego, California. This is a video series, video one. If any of my videos pertaining to this video series for lawyers are compromised in any way, I'll have to, I'll have to remake them. All my statements are being tape recorded right now on a tape recorder, okay? It's a backup. I don't do drugs, I don't, I don't drink, I don't sleep around, I don't steal, I'm not involved in any illegal or criminal activity, I'm not a threat to myself or others. And those just last statements were made as a result of those are the types of things that the perpetrators in the system were claiming that a target was involved in. And I want you to know another thing in closing. I do not and have not hung around one person. Not one at any time, anywhere. I have not developed any type of relationship at the acquaintance level, friendship level, or intimate level since I've been in San Diego since August 8, 2011 arriving in San Diego from Connecticut. I, I went to Connecticut from Michigan. Okay? I was gang stalked all over Connecticut from Michigan. Okay? And have been gang stalked along every single one of my routes every single day, nonstop, since I arrived in San Diego on August 8, 2011, up into and through this date, July 9, 2017, Sunday. So, and it's still ongoing and will continue to be. Absolutely. So, fellow American citizens, this is a... Video one single time that I've attempted to connect with lawyers and human rights groups in Michigan, Connecticut, and San Diego. I've either, either been arrested, ticketed for illegal lodging, trespassing, or encroachment. They made me homeless, okay? Or assaulted or and or psychologically intimidated to move. Tying the target up in the busyness of constantly moving prohibits the target from being mentally and physically attentive to preparing to go to lawyers and going. All right, I'm going to go San Diego, California. This is video one of a video series. Thank you for listening. And I suggest that you go into this Periscope account and take a look at some of the negative comments that have been trolled on my Periscope videos during live broadcasts. All right, I got to go. Thank you for listening. This is video one of a video series. Thank you.